Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek Cupboard, I'm Penge and welcome to Millennia, the new big historical 4X empire building strategy game from Paradox. Now if you were to look at Millennia and tilt your head and cross your eyes and squint a little bit, you might think you were looking at a game of civilization. I think comparisons between Millennia and Civ are inevitable because they just are. They're similar games. In both games you build an empire with cities, you develop new technologies, you go exploring, you do a bit of fighting. However, Millennia does work in quite a few different and interesting ways to Civ, which we will see as we play. So whilst they do have a similar theme, they do end up playing out quite differently. However, one thing that is the same is that like Civ, Millennia is turn-based, which means I can have a lovely cup of tea on the go as I play, which is wonderful. Big thumbs up for that, Millennia. Good job. Now, the game isn't out quite yet. It's due to be released on the 26th of March, so not too far away. And as always, if you're interested, there's a link to the Steam Store page in the video description, so you can go and check the game out a little bit more if you would like to. But anyway, here we go. Let's jump right in, shall we, and begin building a glorious nation. So in terms of game setup, we're going to play with six players on a medium-sized continents map, all pretty standard. I have used the lovely nation builder down here to build our very own nation of Cabordia. There it is there. I did steal the flag for Cabordia from Sweden. Sorry, Sweden. That's normally the Swedish flag, but we've borrowed it for Cabordia because, as you can see, it's in Geek of Corporate Colours and it's got pointy crowns on it, which is quite fun. And our national bonus over here is a boost to production. I don't think it's a very big boost, but it might help out in the early game just to get things built a little bit quicker and to give us a tiny advantage. And yes, we're up against Rome, India, Brazil, Greece and Japan, who've all got their own national bonuses over there as we can see. So I think with that done, we are ready to go. Without any further ado, let's pop back to the Stone Age and found the nation of Cabordia. Okay, dokie, okay, here we go. Welcome to the year 10,000 BC, everybody. We have gone back in time quite a long way and welcome to the capital of Cabordia, the fledgling city of Northampton. There is Northampton there. Hello, Northampton. And right now, as you might expect, because we have only just begun the game, Northampton is a teeny tiny city. It's not very big at all. It currently has a population of one which means at the moment we've got one lot of workers that can nip out of Northampton into the world around it and do some work for us. And we can see what work they're doing. If we go into here, we can see that right now our workers are down here in the grassland. There is a little kind of worker symbol there showing that they're doing some work out in the grassland. I think that means they're out there scavenging for, you know, berries and mushrooms and things, just getting whatever they can find out the grassland. And by doing that, that brings back two food which is quite good. We could take them out of the grassland and you know, sort of leave them kicking around the city doing nothing. And over here we can see how many turns it will take for the city to actually grow. So if the workers are just kind of hanging around doing nothing at all, getting a day off, the city will grow in 40 turns, which is not very good. That's quite bad because of course, the more population we have in a city, the more tiles we can work and the better we do. So we want this to grow nice and quick. So at the moment, 40 turns, that's terrible. If we put them into the scrubland, they can pick up one bit of food. That's going to be eight turns, which is yeah, better than 40 turns, but not quite as good as the four turns that it takes if they work the grassland to bring back two food. So that's what we're going to leave them doing. So workers of Northampton nip out into the fields. I think we can see which tile they're working. Yeah, it's that one there. So the tiles around the city, that little kind of circle there shows that the workers are working that particular location. So they're out here looking for lovely kind of bits to eat and then taking it back. And we can see here the current needs of the city. So the moment in the Stone Age, life was kind of simple. It was fairly basic and all the people want is food. They just want to have full tummies and that is kind of it. So at the moment, that's what they want. And they're getting 200% of their food needs, which is completely brilliant. So they're okay for food. And yeah, these sort of needs do change over time. So as things become more advanced, they want things like more homes and sanitation and luxuries and things. But right now, because, you know, we're quite happy banging rocks together at the minute, all the people want is food, which is absolutely fine. We can deal with that. So taking a look around Northampton, what do we have going on? So a little bit of water over there. I'm not quite sure where that's going to go. Is that going to lead to a lake or the sea or whatever? I do not know. But yeah, we can put boats and things out into that eventually over time. There is a bit of a hill over here. Is that going to lead onto some sort of mountain range or is it just an isolated hill? I've got some trees over here. There's definitely trees down here as well. Okay, so also we have over here, look, some special tiles that have got resources on. And they're the only ones I can see 
can't see any more kind of special resource tiles. So over here on that tile and on that tile where we do have some people sort of stood around waiting to do something, we've got wheat, which is exciting. Now, right now, we can't do much with wheat because we haven't sort of learned farming yet. So we can know there's something weird growing out the floor over there, but we don't know what to do with it. We're just kind of looking at it going, I don't know what that is. Do we, what is that? Do, do we eat it? How does this work? Do we make clothes out of it? I'm not quite sure. So we can't do much with it right now, but when we unlock the secrets of farming, we can put a farm down onto that and it will provide us with more food than if we just forage the tile normally. If we forage that tile, it brings back two food. If we put a wheat farm onto it, it brings back three food. And also it provides an actual resource. It provides a proper resource. And this game does have resource sort of supply chain type things. So we can build a sort of farm to get the wheat out of the ground. That's fine. We have wheat. And then on another tile, if we have the right tech, we can build a windmill of some kind to turn it into flour. And then we build a bakery to turn it into bread. And the bread provides a lot more food than just the wheat coming out of the ground itself. So yeah, there are sort of supply chains going on and there's loads of different things. There are many different things that you can put into the supply chains. All sorts of different products can be made with all sorts of different bonuses. But right now we can't do anything with that either. So I think we should go exploring. Let's go and have a little look around, shall we? We've got these two units here. So you guys at the top there um these are just regular kind of just war band people just you know angry angry people with hitty sticks nothing too exciting so i think you guys head up here you guys have a little look over in that part of the world so go just there okay nothing much going on just some kind of planes or whatever it is and then you nip up there ah okay right this is good we found our first tribal village or goody hut as people tend to call them so yeah we can nip into there have a chat with the people and normally we get to choose between one of two little kind of bonuses we get a choice in this which is quite fun so we can kind of pick which one is going to be more useful to us um so they've finished their movement they've got no more movement points and you guys down here where shall we send you um i kind of feel if they're going up that way if they've just gone straight up, then why don't you guys just come straight down? So go to here and then go to just there. Okay, hill and trees. Okay, nothing too exciting. Okie doke, right. So that's kind of done that. We still do have a few of the bits and bobs to do. Uh, so choose technology. Let's go and have a look at what technology we can pick, given that we are in the Stone Age. So, you know, it's limited technology in the Stone Age. We've got farming, where we can learn about farms and plantations and working the land. Tribal elders allows us to build a little kind of building that gives us knowledge and we can get research done quicker. Defense is obviously about fighty stuff. Scouting is clearly about doing scouting a bit quicker. And workers means that we learn how to kind of build improvements around us to sort of you know, make life a bit better and get sort of special things created. And we're going to go down that route. We're going to go down the route of workers. It gives us access to a clay pit and they're really useful. Clay pits are very handy and it gives us eight improvement points right away when we get that research done. So I think, yes, we will look into workers, please. Um, and yeah, we'll look at the um, we'll look at the improvement point things down here, but we don't have many right now. So if we want to build things around the world, we sort of use these things down here. So at the moment, we could spend six of our improvement points, which we don't have. We've got zero at the minute. We need some time to build them up. Uh, but six is a hunting camp, uh, 12 is a dock, 12 is fishing boats, 12 is a forester, and 16 is a pasture. So when we learn farming eventually, if farms will appear in this list. They will cost a certain amount of points. And then we could use our points to build a farm onto here to get wheat. But right now, we don't know what that stuff is. That weird stuff growing out the ground, we are completely clueless. So, okay, we can't do much about that right now. But over time, we'll you know, need a lot of these. These become absolutely crucial to everything. So that's that sorted now. So we shall look into uh, figuring out how to build or you know, research workers. And now the final thing in Northampton is to construct something. What do we want to do? We could spend four turns building some cavalry on sort of a horse and go and do some scouting that might be quite handy we could spend four turns building a war band we could get some walls we could get a town center to get some government xp or we could build a dolmen to get some influence which affects our border expansion and that's what we're going to do this is quite important we want our borders to expand nice and quick so other people can't settle nearby and nick all of the good things in the tile so we shall build 
a dolmen. Like just kind of an exciting sort of tomb thing, isn't it? A dolmen. So I'll build one of those. Nine turns that will take. So it's quite a while to get it done, but there we go. Um, right, so that's that done. And yeah, looking over here, we've got culture. That's ticking up a little bit. So plus two culture per turn. That's just coming from you know, Northampton being Northampton. And um, yeah, we are going to earn two government XP per turn, which we can use to do various bits and bobs. Now, right now, we'd need 30 government XP to spawn a settler. So it's going to take a while until we can get a settler in. There are buildings that give us more of that government XP. If we look over here, the town centre, when that's built, that gives us an extra one government XP per turn. So we generate three per turn, so we could potentially get settlers quicker. But I want our borders to expand first. Let's try and consolidate Northampton before we go and make new cities. Um, and then, yeah, we also have a tribal government. And we can spend these government points either on special powers... So these things here and more will appear over time. Or we can go into our sort of special tribal government screen and we can spend our points on these things instead, which is quite intriguing. That's where this game sort of comes into its own. There's a balance. It's not just you make a settler in Northampton and also you upgrade your government. It's a choice between the two. Do you want a settler? Do you want to spend your points on getting a new settler? Or do you spend your points on getting some more food in the homeland and more knowledge. Where do you want to focus things? And that's why I quite like this game. It's got an interesting sort of balance going on and you have to be quite careful with where you spend all your various points and things. But right now we can't do anything with that because we haven't got enough government XP. So let's click out of that and we shall end our turn. Everybody else gets a go. The years move on a bit. So yeah, 250 years just went by then. And all we did was kind of walk a bit over there and walk down here. Um, okay, which way do we get these guys to go? I think, given that, that looks a bit like it might come to a dead end, possibly, they could look at that thing, the guys at the top, and then kind of head over in that direction. So they could cover this. So maybe you guys head over to the west. Let's go over here, shall we? So again, not much going on. And down here. Okay, there are some fish. There's some tuna. Um, I shoot Ah, there they are. Right, the tuna, the, the marker thing is in a slightly obscure place. It looks like the tuna have washed up on that beach. But okay, no, I think the tuna are just there. Okay, um, they provide quite a lot of food, I think. Uh, tuna provide five food. Given that one tile there provides two, tuna provide five food from one tile. That's really good. And down here, we've got game. So there's some sort of, uh, you like deer down there or something. Uh, with hunting camp, they provide money and also bones which is quite handy. And I think meat as well. I think you get meat off them too. So that's also quite good. Okay, right. So good exploring. Well done, you lot. And you guys, let's pop over into here and say hello to the tribal camp. Hello, auction. The village is holding an auction to sell and trade its people's wares. Okay, sell something to the locals. We get 50 wealth, so 50 money effectively, or buy their supplies to bring back home, plus five production on Northampton. Ah, that means Northampton will build its dolmen a little bit quicker. And then when that's done, our borders expand quicker. And then we can build another thing in there and just make life a bit better. Do you know what? We'll have that, please. So currently, it's going to take eight turns to build that dolmen thing in Northampton. If we bring back five production down to six, we've just saved, what, around 500 years of work on that dolmen. Okay, that's really good. And then you guys come back here because that, I would say is the ocean. I would say that's the sea. It might possibly, might be a lake of some kind, but I think it's the sea. Okay, so we're quite near the edge of the sort of the edge of this sort of uh, land mass over here, possibly. Okay, right, go to the next turn. Let's see what we've got going on. Another 250 years passes by. Uh, right, you guys pop over here. There's some more tuna. There's more tuna over here. If we were to set a city up just here, that would have access to very very quickly plus 10 food that will keep their food going for absolutely ages that is brilliant okay and then do you know what? wander into that corner there's some more tuna and there is somebody else down here that's not one of the sort of enemy ai players that's just a little kind of peaceful independent city state type thing uh, we can have a chat with them we can eventually sort of make them our vassal or we could even sort of assimilate them into the empire if you like and bring them in but we need to go and find who they are first but uh, okay, so somebody down there, um, go to next, you guys, um, go to here, and ah, that's rice, I think, isn't it? Okay, so rice up there, oh, oh, that's quite good, cotton, 
Okay, so pop over there and have a little look around. So there's cotton just there. So again, it wouldn't be too shabby to say build over here, maybe. Get into the city over here to make use of rice and cotton. Okay, right. There is some good stuff around, just not right next to our capital. But that's fine. Uh, right, we'll head here. And then we'll go just here. I don't know if they're going to get a bit grumpy. If we send our sort of fighty people in to that tile there, are they going to take that as a bit of an offensive act? I don't know. Let's try it in it. Wandering. Kazan. Okay, we found Kazan. Hello, Kazan. How are you? Don't worry about us. We're friendly and nice. We have no intention of doing fighty stuff. Um, and what do we do with you guys? I think we kind of need to know what's just here. Because yeah, we know what's down here now and what's over there, but we don't know what's happening one, two, three tiles away from our capital. So maybe head on into there. Ah, okay, right. You can't do it right now. You'll do that next turn. Okay, move down here then. Just uncover a little bit. Many trees. Many, many trees. Okay, right. Run time on. This is good. Uh, right, don't worry, Kazan. We're going to move away from you. We're not going to attack you. We're lovely. There's some more animals down here. More game. Okay, that's quite interesting. Move over there. Many trees. Uh, right, back to these guys. Yeah, go just here. Uh, okay, so we can get through the trees and out into whatever's on that side. And now we have a culture power. So over time, we've been building up our culture. And culture doesn't have a kind of a little sort of culture tree like it does in the other game. It's a bit like this one. I don't want to make too many comparisons to. But yeah, the game that rhymes with Biv. Um, yes, it doesn't have its own sort of culture tree type thing. Instead, you get different powers. And over time, these change. We get more kind of different domains of experience. And that gives us more things. Right now, all we can do with our amassed culture is create a town or do some local reforms. And we want to create a town. Now, a town isn't a city. A city is big. Towns are little, and we can't really do that much in the towns. They're just kind of their own little kind of autonomous thing. We will create a town, and when you create a town, it attaches to a region. So this is sort of the city of Northampton with the region of Northampton. Northampton Shire, if you like, around it. And currently, it has a region level of one, and it's got no towns in it. We can see up here, no towns at all. But if we do go to create town... We can put one down and it will attach to this particular region because that's the only one it can kind of attach to. So it'll become part of Northampton's region, Northampton Shire. Um, and then, yes, the region level will go up. And then that means Northampton can grow to a bigger size. I think with a region level of one, Northampton caps out at a size of five. So you do need to build towns because, you know, people live in the towns as well as in the cities. Uh, and also towns do get bonuses. Towns do get bonuses depending on what they're adjacent to. If they're adjacent to improved tiles, they do get little kind of boosts and things that make them more effective. They bring in money and various other bits and bobs. So if we put a town just there, it's next to the two potential farms. We haven't quite got that yet, but potentially get two farms in. So yeah, if we put it there, the borders also expand in that kind of direction, which is quite handy. So yeah, okay, pop a town just there, please. Uh, and it's the town of Lincoln. Okay, I mean, yeah, weirdly enough, when I was using the um, the sort of uh, nation builder thing to set up Cabordia, you can pick the city names, the default city names. I changed that one to be Northampton, of course. And then you can pick the sort of default town names. So you can say, okay, I would like, um, I don't know, Japanese city names with French town names, please. So, uh, yeah, I've gone for... Uh, English, well, yeah, English sort of uh, city names and American town names. But I mean, Lincoln is also <laughs> is also a town in England. So there we go. There we go. But so the city of Northampton is now linked by a road to the town of Lincoln. And yeah, it's just it's a bit smaller than Northampton is. But that's now providing some money, I think. And it also means that Northampton is now a region level two, which means it can get up to a population of 10, which is wonderful. So we can grow a bit more now, which is very good. Also, we do now have a couple of options over here in our tribal government. So we've amassed enough government XP. We get two per turn. We've now got eight of it to do something in here. So we could potentially get some tribal farming on the go to give us plus one food, or we could unlock a new government power to spawn a warband in a capital vassal or outpost. 
So at the moment, yeah, it's a government power. At the moment, we click on that. All we can do is spawn a settler. If we take this, that gives us another option in here about where to spend our government XP points. I think for now, given that the needs in Northampton are on 150%, they're no longer on 200%, um, it's still okay, but we want it to be green so Northampton can grow the quickest it can. I think maybe let's spend six of our eight government point things on tribal farming to increase food production. Let's get that done, please. So we now go down to, yeah, just two government points, but Northampton is going to grow in six turns rather than the eight it was before. And we've got our needs back in the green, which is wonderful. Okay. Very good. Right, so move on to the next turn. You guys down here. Uh, let's head... Uh, we can only move one, sort of, uh, one hex in the forest because it's slow going. Let's go to there, then. Uh, there's a, there's more tuna down here. There, there is much fish on this side of the map. And then we will just sort of cover this bit over here, maybe. So we'll go just there, and we'll go just here. There is something else... Oh, ooh, there's some borders there. Okay, end our turn end turn oh right okay that's a bit unfortunate some barbarians have appeared and they're attacking lincoln and we have no defense over here whatsoever um okay you guys <laughs> can you get back over here um i don't know which is going to be the quickest way to reach the barbarians i suspect maybe lincoln might be in for a spot of bother okay this isn't great is it right? run back up here We'll try and come through this way and fight the Barbarians. The Barbarians are a bit hurt. I think Lincoln fought back. But, um, okay, right, and then down here, you guys pootle around. Ooh, another little goodie hut village thing. Okay, ah, and we've learnt all about workers, which is brilliant. Okay, so there we go. Worker technology is done. Uh, so now where do we go? I think, given that we've got that wheat right next to the capital, let's go down the route of farming. And you'll notice that farming only takes four turns. I don't fully understand this in the game. So two of the nations have understood the secrets of farming, which means, yeah, 10% quicker per other nation that's discovered that tech before you. I don't really get how that works. So some other civilization on the other side of the world has understood farming. And because they know how farming works, we suddenly are able to research it quicker. I don't really get that. I find that a bit weird, but you know what? It's fine. So four turns until farming is unlocked. And you'll see down here, if we unlock three of these technologies, we could then start working on moving into the Age of Bronze. And that's how this game works. You move through different ages. So the Age of Stone, Age of Bronze, and there's there's loads. There's loads of different ages, but we'll come to that in a bit. But um, yeah, you want to be kind of trying to be the first to get to the ages because if you're the first person to move into a new age you get all sorts of exciting bonuses and lovely goodies and things um if you're not the first you move into it anyway but you don't get that initial kind of boost of rewards and things um, so we'll try our best to get into that i'm not entirely sure if we will or not i do not know uh, right so farming is underway four turns until that's done i'm a little bit concerned about lincoln and we can't do much else right now we could unlock raise tribal army but then we're going to need the government xp to actually sort of trigger that as a thing so i don't think we can spawn any people over here for now in hindsight was it potentially a bit foolish to leave our capital and town entirely undefended possibly it was a bit but never mind oh however i think the borders just expanded over here which is brilliant uh, and we will try and run in over here we can't fight the barbarians this time but we will hopefully distract them enough that they are quite badly beaten. So either they might fight us or they might run away. That's going to be my hope there. But OK, and then down here, you guys pop into the goodie hut. Let's see what we get. A massive temple pyramid lays before you. Its contents and purpose are unknown. OK, so we can get 10 exploration XP or 10 warfare XP. OK, so this is a new type of XP that we haven't picked up just yet. And when we do that, it'll open up more sort of uh, more things over here. There's more options and more different sort of styles of things that we can invest points into. So I think, given that we're currently exploring the map, let's send an expedition to explore intricate carvings and get us 10 exploration XP. And now down here, look, we've got a new domain, a new kind of way of spending experience points. And this time it's exploration XP. And with that, if we had 20, we could spawn a scout. I kind of do want to scout. 
I would like a scout. They would be very handy. Uh, we can move a little bit more. There's loads of stuff down here. There's loads. Got some more game, got some more cotton. There's more fish over there. Um, okay, right. So Northampton's finished building the dolmen, which is brilliant. So now its borders will expand a bit quicker because it generates influence and influence affects how quickly your borders expand out. Where do we go now? Do we invest three points in some scouting cavalry and then pop somebody on a horse and just kind of go zoom them about the map a bit quicker than our warbands can go? Or do we maybe invest in a town centre to get some more government XP so we can upgrade our government a bit? Or maybe even get some walls for defences? Um, I think, Joe, let's get some cavalry. Let's get some scout cavalry and they can gallop around and have a little look around the world. Um, I'm a bit concerned for the fate of Lincoln here. If Lincoln does, they, they can destroy the cities, I think, and the towns. So I think if they get another hit in, I think Lincoln might possibly collapse, which would be a bit of a shame. We will see what happens. Yes, the barbarians have raised Lincoln to the floor. I'm sorry, Lincoln. <laughs> pesky barbarians okay you guys um i don't know what to do with you lot okay you've come down this way a long way maybe come back up and you guys head over there possibly so yeah work your way back up this way ah okay we've happened across a barbarian encampment and somebody else's borders again it's just like a it's a little independent sort of city state not another one of the ai players um yeah, okay, the Barbarians have destroyed Lincoln. Lincoln is no more. That's a bit of a shame. However, we can now go in and have a fight with the Barbarians, which is our first combat. And this means we get to look at the little kind of combat screen. Look, a little fight actually happens. They run over and boop them. They run over and boop us a bit. We run over and boop them with the hitty sticks. They fall over because they were quite weak. And we take a glorious victory. And there we go. Battle in the Wilderness. And we've defeated the barbarians just a turn too late, I'm afraid. So Lincoln is now gone. We've lost our town. We can get it back again with enough culture points. It's just a bit of a waste. You know, it sort of was there for a bit and now it's not. But there we go. Right. End our turn. Let's go on to the next. Oh, OK. Right. We're going to have a bit of a problem getting away from here because now some barbarian troops have spawned. Um, I think maybe let's go to. Oh, there's some more barbarian troops there. Right, okay, we're going to go down here then. Oh, hello. Ah, Japan. Hello, Japan. How are you? They've got scout cavalry. They're a little bit injured. I assume because there are many barbarians around here. There are a lot of barbarians in this game. There are many barbars. And um, yeah, you do have to kind of, you have to nip it in the bud fairly early on if they're near to you. I don't think they'll be that much of a problem. But um, yeah, if you do find barbarian encampments near to you, you do need to go and sort them out pretty quickly because they can get out of control. They can send many waves of barbars at you that can cause problems. There must be something up here, because some barbarians did come from up here, didn't they, to burn down Lincoln. So I'm not quite sure what's up there, but hopefully our, um, yeah, we get the scout cavalry next time. So we'll do that. Oh, hang on. These guys, these guys can rest up, actually. You guys can guard, which means you sort of heal up as well. So you guys have a bit of a break. And we will do that. Oh, we got attacked. Oh, okay. We've met another nation. Hello, Japan. How are you? Uh, though our people have little interest in the world beyond their borders, we formally greet you. Okay, so Japan are isolationists. That's okay for us. We'll just be nice and civil to you. We won't bother you. You don't need to bother us. It's all going to be fine. So dismiss that. But we've met our first people nearby. I don't quite know where Japan are. I don't quite know whereabouts they are. Right, our people got quite badly beaten up there by the barbarians. We are not quite dead, but we're not looking overly healthy. So can we try and leg it over here? Oh, okay. If the barbarians leave us alone, we might be able to wander into that goodie hut and pick up some goodies before we all collapse and die. That'd be quite good. Um, and we have our horse scout. Uh, maybe go over here. We don't know what's over here just yet. So let's um, yeah, gallop on over in that direction. Oh, oh, that's quite good. That's cattle. We've got cattle and we've got game over here. Oh, this is brilliant. Oh, and somebody else. Okay, another little kind of city state over there. Uh, ah, right, choose technology. We've now researched farming, which is very good. Okay, this is good news. Uh, where do we go next? 
Um, I mean, scouting defences and tribal elders all seem like very good things. Um, not so bothered about scouting. Not so bothered about that. Defences, given the amount of barbarians, will be quite good. But tribal elders allows us to build the council, which gives us knowledge, which means in the long run, we can get tech done quicker. So maybe let's go down the route of tribal elders. Let's get that done, shall we? Okay, so six turns until that's done. Crikey. Um, and Northampton, of course, isn't doing anything anymore because it's just sort of um, trained up its scout cavalry person. So what do we do with you now? Ah, okay. Food stockpile is a new thing that we can now build. Um, it gives us three food. Three food. What's the current need? 150 on food. I think it might be worth doing that, although the town centre is also a very good thing. But I think, let's go for the food stockpile, please. We'll go for that. And now that we've discovered the secrets of farming, we can go down here to our improvement points. We've been acquiring them by yeah, plus one every turn, which is OK. That's fine. Um, and then when we did the worker research, we got eight given to us in a great big kind of pile, which is also quite nice. So we've got 18 of these. So we could potentially invest 12 of them in a farm and then get some wheat from over here. But I think the best thing to do is get a clay pit because a clay pit, if worked, then gives us some production so we can build things a bit quicker. And also it gives us more improvement points so we can build more farms and docks and fishing boats and foresters and everything else down here, which is kind of what we need to do really in the long run. So for now, let's spend 12 of our points on getting a clay pit set up. Now, where do we put the clay pit? Uh, let's put it maybe just here, look, near to the water. Kind of makes sense, doesn't it? The water might make the ground a bit sort of soggy and clayish. So pop that in. So that should go to plus two down in the corner there. There we go. We're now generating an extra improvement point every single turn. And they will soon mount up. And that means we can build more farms and more bits and bobs. It shall be wonderful. I think maybe that's impacted our food gathering abilities. So as soon as we can, we get a farm down on these and then start getting wheat to get more food from those tiles than we can from just, you know, scavenging for mushrooms or whatever. Right, end the turn for now. I think, are our guys still alive down there? They're still alive. They got left alone, which is brilliant. Undiscovered. Oh, oh, this is a thing. This is a thing. Ah, right, so around the map, there are special locations like sort of uh, notable things like Mount Everest and uh, various other bits and bobs. The Great Barrier Reef is around. And the idea is you send one of your scouts to go and properly kind of investigate them. And it gives them some experience points and all that kind of stuff. And if you get three of them, you can trigger a different age. You can choose a different age to move into when you start moving from the Age of Stone to another age. So you can start sort of picking different ages and things. Um, the only thing is, it's got to be a proper scout. So our guys here, our army of you know, you know, hitty club people, are looking at this great big kind of you know, empty desert over here. Even though all this is desert, but that's a special bit of desert. And they're looking at it going, okay, yeah, deserty. I don't know what to do with it. What do you think I'm a scout? So we might need to bring a scout back over there to look at that. Although I suspect Japan are around here somewhere. So Japan might scout that before us. However, Japan can't get to that goody hut before us because we've now got their artifact. The village is built around a large stone monolith. Its etchings and carvings tell complex stories in an unknown language. It is very significant to the village people. Okay. <laughs> wow, they're doing the YMCA thing there. We can get five knowledge or five culture. I think let's go for five knowledge. That's two and a half turns worth of knowledge, which will put us closer to tribal elders, which when that's done, can put us closer to moving into a brand new age. Yeah, okay, we'll have a bit of knowledge, thank you. And look at that. That went from, was it five down to two turns? That's fantastic. Um, and these guys, they're healed up. Um, maybe Let's put them back in Northampton. Let's put them back in Northampton for now, just in case some more bar bars appear. Um, also, there is the concept of unrest. Unrest does kind of slowly build up over time. Um, but yeah, if you garrison units into sort of uh, cities and things, it does bring the unrest down. So Northampton currently has an unrest of one. There's a teeny tiny green thing just there. But yeah, people are doing that kind of whatever that pose is. Is that a yoga pose? 
where they do that and go, oh, mm, that kind of thing. So they're doing that. Um, but yeah, because we've got a unit in there, it will bring the unrest down by four next turn. So they'll sort the unrest out. People are assured by the fact that we have some military people looking after us again, which is wonderful. Um, yeah, so you guys can wait there. And I do want to get you down here to look at that. It would be good if we could discover that before anybody else, but it is quite a long way away. I think it would take you at least five or six turns to get there. And I suspect maybe by that point, somebody else might have got there. So let's go to here. Ah, uh, there's sheep. There's another person there. More tuna. Okay. Right. There's a lot of, there's a lot of tuna going on. Uh, oh my goodness me. There's, there is much tuna. And there's Malmo. Hello, Malmo. There's loads of tuna over here. Okay, this is very promising. And another little goody hut at the end. There. Okay, we'll go for that, please. Right, so we're in 7000 BCE. Uh, you, Scout, run down here and find out what's in there. Nomads. Okay, we found a small camp of nomads. They explain their leader is very wise and willing to share her knowledge with you. Would we like government XP or warfare XP? We are picking up warfare XP now. We've found a little bit of it. I think, though, we will go for government XP because we can do many exciting things with that. Um, yeah, that village kind of disappears. That's absolutely fine. Yeah, warfare. We must have picked that up from something, possibly from being attacked. Um, but yeah, so this at the minute allows us, if we have 25 of it, to generate some volunteers who would like a sort of yeah, basic war band type unit. Uh, we can't get a scout. We're nearly at the point where we could get a settler, although we could possibly spend some of those points on things here instead. We could generate another plus one improvement point every turn for 14, or we could get plus one knowledge. So we could research quicker, we could improve our lands quicker, or we could get an entire new city set up. I mean, over here looks like a really good place for a city. Just there, look. If you pan, if we put a city just there, you've got tuna there, 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 and there. So loads of tuna, and then you could put the town just there, next to those two resources. That would work pretty well. Okay, I think we save up and we get a settler and we put them over there. Okay, I I mean, yeah, down here's pretty good as well. And sort of over here's pretty good. Are we gonna be coastal? Are we going to be a kind of a coastal nation? Possibly we are. Um, right, okay, yeah, let's kind of you know, take time on a bit. Let's do some more exploring and see what else is around and have a little look around and find more things. Ah, we've picked up enough culture to do another culture power thing. So again, let's create a town. Let's rebuild a new town over the burning wreckage of Lincoln. Okay, what's it gonna be called now? Portland, okay, so Portland is back. Hello, Portland. Um, and we might just put some troops into that. Just in case some barbars sneak in through the trees and try and destroy it, we shall put some basic defense there just to make sure that people behave. Right, okay, that's all very good. And look at that, the border's already expanding, which is magnificent. Right, run you guys around here. Okay, pick a new technology. Tribal Elders is now done. So we could, if we wanted to, we could carry on in the Age of Stone. We could look at defenses and look at scouting, or we could begin working toward the Age of Bronze. Select to begin entering a new age. That's what we will do. We shall move toward the Age of Bronze because that's all very exciting. Um, I don't know how we work out if anybody else is moving toward the Age of Bronze. I'm not entirely sure, but yeah, we'll find out. Something does pop up over here, I think. Um, okay, right, let's keep on keeping on. I do see some bar bars. Okay, you guys come back down here and then attack the barbarians. Okay, we're gonna have a bit of a fight here, a little bit of a rumble. So we bopped them, they come back and bop us. I like this. I like this little kind of fighty thing. It gives you a, a slightly sort of, a slightly odd visual representation of how the fight is going. So yeah, the fight ended in a bit of a stalemate, but I think we caused slightly more damage to them than they did to us. We clearly had bigger, hittier sticks or whatever. Um, but yeah, they are currently, yeah, we're under siege because the barbarians are in our territory. So they're causing a bit of a problem. So yeah, they're slowing down Northampton's effectiveness, unfortunately. Yeah, they're affecting the food. So currently, Northampton doesn't have what it needs to produce enough food. Although, I think maybe, is it worth doing this next time round? Um, we could use our improvement points 
to get a farm up and running on one of these wheat fields. We can actually, you know, start using the wheat properly. We've got enough improvement points to get us a farm. I think that's what we do. So yeah, right now, to work that would just give us two food. But if we put a farm on it, it's three food. So if we go to here, grab ourselves a farm it turns it into a proper farm look with a little kind of storehouse and fencing and such like um 167 percent of our food supplies are now being met which is pretty good and we can click in here and we can see now that we're producing one lot of clay from the clay pit which is useful and two lots of wheat which we're now consuming for three food apiece which is pretty good so we can get another farming over here and then have loads of wheat. And then over time, if we learn how to make, say, a mill, we can produce flour. And then if we learn how to make a bakery, we can turn the flour into bread. And that's what I think we should aim to do. Because you've got wheat, let's make bread out of it, shall we? Um, and, oh, okay. Age, oh, right, okay. So the Romans, I don't know how we know this, but Rome, because that's the Rome thing, the Romans are moving toward the Age of Bronze. The Age of Bronze may become the future in seven turns. Rome are 37.73% of the way through moving toward the Age of Bronze. We're only 13.5%. Okay, so I don't think we'll be able to get to the Age of Bronze before the Romans, which is a bit of a shame, but do you know what? Never mind, never mind. We might catch up, possibly. Something might, you know, stop the Romans from researching it, or you know, something terrible might happen to them. I don't know. We'll try our best. Okay, Northampton's built its food stockpile, which means it's now got a lot of food. We're back up to 200% needs in terms of food, so that's all looking good. Now we have a little bit of a choice. Do we get ourselves one of these very handy buildings, or do we get another scout cavalry unit and just try to do some more exploring? And I think we might do that. So I think we get that first and then I think we might go for the council building. So eight turns to get a council building, but that gives us one extra knowledge, which means we do get research done a bit quicker. So we can queue one thing up. So do that next. And then after you've got the scout done, get us a council building set up, please. I think that's what we go for. Um, and yeah, we're trying to move up here because above Malmo, over here, there is another little goody hut thing. So yeah, we'll go and try and grab that and just see what's over there. Okay, we're at the goody hut and there is a lost archer unit making camp hiding from barbarians. We can either give them supplies to get us 10 warfare XP or we can just get a free archer unit. Yes, absolutely. Give us an archer, thank you very much. So they now kind of buddy up with the scout for now. They're kind of now sort of considered as one army, if you like. So yeah, we can have three units as part of one army. At the moment, you can expand that with new technologies and things. But right now, that's all we can do with it. Um, okay, that's pretty good. I think we bring the archer back over here to defend the homeland. So well, yeah, archer, can you start moving this way, please? We'll try and bring you back home. Oh, and something exciting is happening. Who got to the age of bronze? Oh, it was Greece. Oh, okay. So Greece leapfrogged the Romans and got to the Age of Bronze first. Oh, okay. Right, that's probably annoyed the Romans. Okay, so Greece got there first with their fancy bronze things. You know, bronze plates, bronze glasses, bronze windows, everything else. Right, so they're just showing off with everything bronze. Um, so we get all these things, but we're not in the Age of Bronze yet. So in the Age of Bronze, you do get national spirits and vassals integrate faster and various other bits of bobs happen, but we're not in the Age of Bronze. The world is you know, somewhere, the Age of Bronze has happened, the Greeks are loving it, but we're not quite there yet. So all these other things can happen. So barbarian warlords might appear because the Age of Bronze has happened. But uh, yeah, we can't make the most of these things just yet because we haven't moved into it ourselves. So yeah, if we go and look, we've still got three turns. We're three turns short. I mean, that's pretty good. That's not too shabby at all. Um, also, I think maybe actually if we leave our archer to come down here... I think possibly we should get our second city up and running. So let's spawn a settler. We have to be careful with the settlers because they're very, very flimsy. But I don't think there are barbarians around here. So can we move the settler to just here, possibly? And then maybe there? Uh, yeah, OK, right. We'll leave them there for now, I think. We'll leave them there for now. And then, yeah, let's try and bring the archer down here. Maybe the archer could 
defend the city over here, the new city. And there we go, we've made it into the Age of Bronze, which is the second age of the game, okie doke, so end to that age, and now we get to make a very interesting choice, because now we get to pick a national spirit. And you get to pick these in certain ages, so you get to pick one age two, four, seven, and eight, is that there? So um, yeah, you can pick any of these. If you're the first to pick one, you get a little kind of bonus to things. So if we say, for example, picked, I don't know, warriors, which we're not going to, but if we did, we would get given a free 25 warfare XP that we can then just do with as we please. Um, but yeah, what are we gonna go for? I don't think we go for warfare. We're not, we're not a fighty people. We like peace. We're lovers, not fighters. Let's hug and have tea instead of, you know, stabbing each other in the head with things. So we're not going to go for warfare. Um, diplomacy could be quite good. Engineering sounds quite intriguing. Mound builders, that sounds quite good. So, um, yeah, this sort of, it sort of gives us another thing to spend points on. So where we've got the sort of government thing here, we can nip into here and spend government points on these things. Um, we can, eventually, it'll pop under whichever one we pick. So if we pick Sexploration, if we pick an Ancient Seafaring thing, we'll get another little option down here, and then a similar screen to the government one, where we can invest our exploration points. If we pick Diplomacy, we get a Diplomacy thing down here, and a similar kind of setup. So it's a bit like that, look. Like that. Oh, very shiny shield. Very impressive. Good job. Um, so yeah, we get all these things. So we need to pick one of these. Um, I don't think Olympians. I mean, given given where we are, and given that I'm thinking we build just here, that's on the coast with many fish. We build down here, possibly, on the coast with many fish. Northampton, not overly coastal, but it's, yeah, we could get a little bit of sea over there. And we could build over here on the coast, again, near to lots of fish. Is it worth, we could also sort of try and get Malmo on board and say, hey, Malmo, be our friends, be one of our vassals. And we could possibly sort of go get the city to join us properly, but it's quite good to have a vassal. So uh, they're also coastal. Is it worth, and down here actually, Kazan could also join us. Is it worth being a little kind of coastal nation on the end over here? Oh, is that Japan? Ah, Japan are down here. Oh, and Japan found the Sahara Desert. Okay, yeah, they've looked at that. They've figured out that's the Sahara Desert. Okie doke. Um, I think maybe... Is it worth going down ancient seafarers? So we get all these different things. So expand faster into water tiles. That's quite good. Safe passage. Stronger early ships. We need to build a dock for that. But then the early ships are better at attacking and defending. And it would spawn a galley in somewhere in Cabordia. Um, and then we get Biblos boats. 70% spawn utility ship cost. Okay, utility ships uh, like little kind of sailing boats and things, I think. Uh, we can put a lighthouse for production. Sailors, the boats are better. We can unlock shells, which is a new type of resource. Oh, that's quite fun. So fishing boats means that shells give more wealth. Oh, so shells can make us a lot of money. And if we get a shell dyer, which is a new type of improvement we could put down, that generates even more money. So we take the shells, we make them look nice, and we make a great big pile of money better at gathering stuff from the sea, so food's okay. I, I quite like that. I quite like the idea of going down the route of ancient seafarers and just being a bit boaty. Do we make Northampton a bit boaty? Which, yeah, there's a certain level of irony there, because Northampton, in actual real life, is quite far away from the sea. But um, do you know what? I think we do it. Let, let's go boaty. Let's become ancient seafarers. Uh, hang on, I'm possibly getting too excited by the fact that we can have exciting boats. Let me go and look at the other options first, just to make sure we're not missing out on something completely amazing. But I think given that we are very coastal, and there's loads of ocean around us, and loads of kind of you know, sea resources, that does make sense. But let me just go and check the others, just in case we're missing out on something completely fantabulous. Okay, there are some quite good bonuses in these. I mean, I do quite like the God King Dynasty. They seem very exciting. They can build pyramids, and pyramids give you plus four influence and plus one culture. So if you have a pyramid, your borders are going to expand really, really quickly. However, I don't really see us as being in the right position to become God King Dynasty folks. It's all about hill tiles and all that kind of stuff, and quarries and stone cutters, and we don't really have that much in the way of kind of hills and stone and stuff. We've got some hills there and one there, and that, oh, there's a few up there, actually, but that's kind of it. I see us more as you know, coastal. I see us more taking advantage 
of the ocean. The bounties of the sea are what we can make our name with. So I think let's go for ancient seafarers. And yeah, we'll get all these kind of things here. We get access to all these. And because we're taking this first, we do get 25 exploration XP given to us for free, which effectively means we can take one of these for free. We can get one of these pretty much immediately. So I think let's do that. Let's become ancient seafarers. The people of Northampton can be good at boaty stuff. So select that. Thank you very much. Our national spirit is now ancient seafarers. Um, oh, right. We can't pick these because, of course, we don't have a dock and we haven't got the ship building technology yet. But we can get call of the sea. We can expand faster into water tiles, which is brilliant. So we will take that. Thank you very much. That's pretty good. Um, and then hopefully over here, we can found a new city and look what it's surrounded by. Lots and lots of lovely, lovely water. This is magnificent. OK, so we will have that. Thank you. And OK, Bristol. Yeah, fantastic. That seems pretty good. We shall have that. Um, now, you might be looking at that thinking, hang on. The borders look a little bit different to Bristol. When you found a new city, it's kind of independent. It becomes a vassal when you found it. So the people are going, yay, this is brilliant. Thank you. We'll, just, yeah, we'll look after ourselves for a while. And then eventually over time, they can be integrated into our society. You don't have to. You don't have to integrate them if you don't want to. But it makes sense for us to do them over there because they can get access to lots of shiny bits of Bob. So they're paying us... I get a pittance of things. We're getting a tiny bit of money and the most minuscule fraction of sort of, you know, culture and stuff from them. But in 15 turns, then, you know, not 15 turns, eight turns, eight turns, 15 integration points required. Then, uh, yeah, they can integrate into part of the realm of Cabordia and then we can control them like we do the other city over there. But uh, yeah, for now, we just have to wait for them to sort that out. Archers, though, can go in station them over there just to make sure there's no unrest and all that kind of stuff and there we go we have our second city settled not quite properly integrated yet but give it time and they will actually be part of our lovely realm okay now we need to pick our first thing to research in the age of bronze and i think it has to be shipbuilding because we've just become a load of boaty people so it would make sense to then be able to actually build some boats that might be quite a good idea so if we get that researched it means that we can spawn a utility ship that can be one of our exploration domain power things. Uh, and then also we can unlock galleys. We can then put people into boats to move them around the sea rather than having to go around the land. So we can sort of embark people into boats and it reduces the cost of expansion into water even further. So we should be able to get quite a lot of water tiles in our domain, which will be very good. So yeah, we shall have a bit of that. Thank you. You might notice over here that coming up, we have a little bit of a diversion in the age we go to. Normally, we would go to the Age of Iron. We don't need anything special to go to the Age of Iron. We get three technologies from the Age of Bronze. We can then move toward the Age of Iron, and that would be absolutely fine. However, there are two other ages that we could possibly move into if certain conditions are met. So if we've discovered three landmarks, or if somebody else has discovered three landmarks, landmarks being the thing down here, so like that, that's one landmark, the Sahara Desert. If one particular nation has found three of those, then that means, hang on, back into here, that means that instead of going to the Age of Iron, they could choose to move into the Age of Heroes. They have to have the three tech as well, but they could also, if they've got the landmarks, move into that age there. And if somebody does that, and they get there first, if they're the first person to learn a new age, sort of tech thing, and they go into the Age of Heroes, we all move into the Age of Heroes. The Age of Iron doesn't do anything, that kind of goes. The Age of Blood doesn't exist. We all move into the Age of Heroes. And the same goes for the Age of Blood, which does look a little bit sinister in the background there. So if another another nation has gone around, you know, started killing units from other nations, um, and they've killed six of them, and they've researched three tech, they could choose if they wanted to, to move into the somewhat unpleasant sounding Age of Blood. Uh, at the minute... I don't know how we're looking with that. I don't know if anybody's going to move into that or not. I'm not entirely sure. I mean, for all we know, the sieves on the other on the other sort of part of the world that we haven't found yet, they could be killing each other left, right and centre. We've got no idea. So they could sort of trigger us to move into the Age of Blood. We're all sort of relatively happy on our bit of the world, but their actions somewhere else on the world, which we're completely oblivious to, could plunge us into the Age of Blood. Or 
we could be going into the Age of Heroes, or we could just do what we do normally and go into the Age of Iron. We're not entirely sure. So we will see how that pans out. And that's kind of one of the interesting things about this game. You don't have a kind of set path as to what's going to happen. You don't know that you're going to get that tech and this tech and that age and this age. It's all quite varied. It can change. I mean, for all I know, we could go somewhere on a boat and find three landmarks nice and quick and then send everybody into the Age of Heroes. I don't know. That might happen. It might not. We're not entirely sure. Um, but yeah, we'll see how we get on. We will see how we get on with that. But there we go. Shipbuilding does seem like quite a sensible thing to get right now. So let's just tick time on and see what else we can find. Our current plan is to try and get our scouts to look over here because we've not really looked over there, so we don't know what's in that part of the world. So we'll try and head over there and have a little look around. Okay, we do have a little bit of a problem over here. I think that might be a barbarian warlord, and they're quite difficult to deal with. So I think possibly we could do with maybe bringing those archers in. Can we get the archers in from Bristol, put them over here somewhere, and then combine them with our troop from Northampton, and then maybe we might be able to defeat the Barbarian Warlord. We could do with other units coming in. We could do with other units coming in. That's a little bit of a problem because, yeah, they've got a strength of 44. I think even the archers and them combined, that's only going to be 29. So this could be quite bad. Also, how did they get there? How did they get there? Is there now some sort of Barbarian encampment around here somewhere? Has one just kind of popped into existence? I'm not entirely sure. I hope not. If there's one just there, that's going to be a gigantic problem. Uh, okay, right. End the turn. Let's see what we can do with them. Oh, okay. Hang on. I think... I think they just got a... T ah, okay, right. I was going to try and bring our scout in from over there to over here, but I don't think that's going to work. Although, look at that. The Barbarian Warlord is very, very badly damaged. I think because they tried to attack our troops over here and they're in a city... I think maybe that didn't go entirely well. Yeah, you can sort of replay the battles that have happened with this. So there is the Barbarian Warlord. And yeah, I mean, yeah, look, it, we just got sort of the city militia. Just got, you know, the regular folks, the peasants, have just picked up anything sharp and pointy, and they're fighting this Barbarian Lord. So, um, yeah, we've got the regular warband. Did they survive to the end? I'm not entirely sure. Did they? I think they might have survived, actually. You can speed it on right to the end of the fight. So, um, okay, a lot of the warband are dead. A lot of them have died. Um, are we able to bring these archers in? Because the archers would finish him off. No, unfortunately not quite yet anyway. Uh, however, I notice over here, Northampton has expanded its borders to a little bit of ocean, which means we can now use some of our improvement points to get ourselves a dock. And we need a dock to get various things in here. So I think let's get a dock. So a dock gives us plus one wealth, that's quite good. And if we work it, it gives us two wealth and exploration XP. And also, the first time we ever build this, it spawns a utility ship. We might need to expand our borders to there to make use of it, but let's pop a dock in just there. Okay, we've got a little dock. We've taken our first proper steps to becoming seafaring people, and now we've got that. But yeah, we can't do anything with that, I don't think. Can we go to just there? There's nothing for us to kind of... Um, sort of forage around there. There's nothing for us to harvest or fish or whatever. Uh, we might need to go around here, possibly. We might need to nip around here and just uh, get something from over there. But that's fine. Uh, oh, hang on a minute. Yep, you guys, you need to try and run away a bit. That might be a good idea. Let's try and get you guys to run away. Got Le Mans just there. Oh, crikey. We've got some more barbarians there. There is a goodie hut there. There is a goodie hut right there. Oh, could we go in and get that? That'd be quite good. Some free stuff is not a bad thing. Um, okay, you guys can run away here. Some barbar. Ah, you're coming from the other side of the goodie hut. Okay. Um, right, let's see what we do. Oh, hang on. These guys are doing stuff as well now. Hang on. They're there. Um, is it worth attacking this, this barbarian warlord? I think it might be. Let's give a little bit of combat to the barbarian warlord. They are looking pretty weak. They're quite strong. Okay, right. We're looking weaker. I think it's fair to say. Okay, Northampton is completely undefended. This could be quite bad. Um, I don't think they can just walk in and cause chaos straight away. I think they have to sort of fight the settlement first. Um, hang on. Archers. Archers come in. 
and and kill this person, please. Kill him from far away. Right, arrows go in. Quite a lot of us die. Oh, was that it? Was that was that all that happened there? Okay. <laughs> right, I don't know how you're still clinging on to life. How are you still alive? Oh dear. Okay, right, we haven't got any more troops. We haven't got any more troops. Um, no, that was... I didn't want to do it. That was the fight with the scout. Um, right, scout, can you come back here and maybe fight a barbarian warlord? Probably not on top of your list of things to do, but you might need to come and help us out a bit. Um, okay, yeah, that that is a bit of a problem, isn't it? The warlord is a bit of an issue. Um, you... I don't think you can do too much right now. This little kind of utility boat is apparently our 11th navy. Where's the first one? I don't know, but okay. We'll, we'll poodle you about the place. Maybe we'll put you over here near Bristol. So you can do some fishing out in the sea or whatever. We'll try and move you over there. Um, okay. You are going to run straight into there. Uh, a mysterious village. The village looks old. The people here are settled atop ancient ruins, holding secrets unknown to your people. We could get exploration XP. We could get government XP. Exploration XP... Would let us get some ancient seafaring stuff unlocked. Let's go for that. We'll have a bit of that, thank you. Um, and we have got 22 government points. Is it worth maybe investing in one of these? Maybe some more knowledge just to get researched in a bit quicker. Right now, seven turns to understand how boats work. What if we start looking... Yeah, so go down the sort of oral history tradition and get us plus one knowledge. So do that. Down to five. Just took two turns off that research. That's pretty good. However, our scout here is in a little bit of trouble. There's a barbarian and a barbarian and a barbarian. Okay. <laughs> uh, run away from the barbarians towards some barbarians. Marvellous. Okay. <laughs> That's not going to go well, is it? Um, Bristol's not quite ready to integrate just yet. Can we use our culture power to build a town? Ah, oh, we can. We can. Okay, so the town will attach to Bristol. I'm thinking if we put the town there, it's going to be next to those two things there. Although, later on, you can specialise the towns. We can't specialise them right now because they're a level one town, but eventually you can upgrade the towns and you can specialise them. And one of them, I think, is like a, a sort of a fishing town or a port town or something. Um, I mean, what if we just put the town just there? Put the town there. It's surrounded by ocean tiles. Uh, or do we put it here to make use of those two things? Let's put it where I was kind of expecting it to go. Let's create a town just there. And Plano? Plano? I've never seen that town name before. But okay, Plano. We've got a new town over there, which is fun. Um, I'm a bit concerned about this barbarian warlord. Uh, but there's not much we can do. There's not much we can do. We can't get any volunteers. We can't do much. Oh, let's get some of this. Let's spend some of our exploration XP on... We could get the dock to provide more production. That would make things sort of get built a little bit quicker in Northampton. Utility ships are better at defending and movement and such. The early ships are just better. And we get a galley. Oh, that might be worth doing. Do you know what? Yes, we will do that, please. We shall have a galley. Thank you very much. And there it is. A proper actual boat. Okay, yeah, we'll accompany our little kind of ship over there because they're a bit vulnerable. So we'll go with them on the trip round to Bristol. Okay, the Barbarian Warlord is causing a little bit of a problem in our lands, because whatever we throw at them, we can't seem to defeat them. They're still around. They just took out our lovely archer unit that we got from over there. They just walked through them like they were nothing. Um, yeah, the archer's been killed. So yeah, they're just there now look, looking all strong again. Um, we might need to bring you down to here. So at least put some form of defence into the capital. So they've at least got something going on. Um, but yes, can we can we get anybody back? Can we get anybody back at all? Um, have we got walls or anything? I don't know. I, we could build walls, but that would take time. We need some units to kill that chappy. But we haven't got the ability to, to create any units. Um, yeah, this is a little bit unfortunate, isn't it? We could do with 10 more warfare points. So we could then produce some volunteers and a warband would just appear. Um, how quick is it to get a warband in? What if we wanted to change to a warband? Five turns. Uh, or the what we're doing, the council is two turns. It, so it does retain the work you've done on it. It does retain that work. I think in five turns, 
we're all going to be quite horribly dead, surely. In five turns, the, the barbarian uh, warlord will have gone round and just demolished everything. Um, we are in a bit of a bother here. Okay, we'll try and get a warband constructed. We'll try and do that as soon as possible. Um, and then you guys, I know you're having fun exploring, but can you sort of come back home and hopefully get there in time so we don't all die? Right, bring you guys round there. And if you guys could also come home too. No, because there are 37,000 barbarians around there. Okay, coming from that camp, I assume. Let's try and run away over here toward the wonderfully named Tlatwakwitipek. Okay, good. Yes. Uh, right, let's see what we can do now. We've got one scout in there. At full strength. Full strength scout, it has to be said, which is pretty good. Um, so let's see. Are they going to survive? Our borders have expanded, which is quite nice. Is the town going to survive until the end of the day? I think the barbarian warlord's gone. I think we've defeated them. <laughs> <laughs> Hooray! The Battle of Northampton. Yep, so they did some stabby stabby. Good old peasants. The peasants are being kind of brutally hacked to death. And they did enact revenge. It was the peasants and not the scout. Well done, peasant folk. Okay, <laughs> we need to get some more troops into here. We need some more military, I think. I think if you go to... Where is it? In here. And then click on the thing. So click on Japan. Um, their power is 189. Our power is 160 because, yes, we have lost a few units. So possibly we could do with topping up our fighting forces again. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay. We'll get on that. We'll sort that out. Okay, we've unlocked the secrets of shipbuilding. That's all very good for us. Where do we go now? Where do we go now? I mean, belief is okay. That's all about sort of religion and such like. Community is quite good. That gives you some good kind of industrial things. Cranes and saw pits and things. It also gives us a mill, and a mill can turn wheat to flour, and then eventually we can turn that flour into bread, and that generates a lot of food, and is also a tradable commodity, I believe. So possibly we go down the route of community. That could be quite helpful for us. So yes, let's research how to have a lovely, happy community. Okay, community research is all done. That is brilliant. Where do we go next? What's going to be really helpful for us? with what could potentially be the final bit of research we do in the Age of Bronze. Although I did notice that we have Greece already heading into the Age of Iron. Greece must be very, very good. Greece must have a lot going on. We're not probably looking quite so good compared to Greece, but never mind. Um, but yeah, I think yeah, in terms of research, I mean, I am very tempted to maybe go back over here and spend two turns on getting defences because that gives us archers and more militia defenders at the towns and things, which you know, for two turns is probably worth doing. So do you know what? It won't help us get toward a brand new age, but it will help us defend ourselves against the many, many barbarians that are now throwing themselves against us. Okay, I found a goody hut down behind one of the little independent city-states. We had to kind of embark one of our units into the sea and then disembark them onto the goody hut to find it, but we found a lost chariot. A lost chariot unit has lost their steeds, spooked by wild animals. So they could either join us, we could give them some horses to get 20 warfare XP, or we could just kill them to get 30 warfare XP, but also introduce a bit of chaos. And chaos is something that we haven't really looked at yet. There's a couple of things up here which we haven't really sort of examined. Uh, chaos does stack up over time, and eventually when it gets to the top, some sort of terrible random event thing happens. But also on the flip side of that, there are innovations, I think they're called. Um, and they're good things. So they build up over time as well. You get kind of innovation point type things, and they lead to some sort of really clever idea. So maybe the archers figure out how to fire bows quicker and become more effective. Or, I don't know, people might figure out how fishing boats work and they generate more food or whatever, that kind of stuff. So the innovations are like good random events and the chaos stuff is bad random events. Um, I don't think we need to just you know, go and kill these people. That seems a little bit mean. Given that we are having some barbarian issues, possibly a chariot might be quite a good idea. Let's get ourselves a chariot, shall we? Um, I mean, yeah, it's in a bit of an unfortunate place. It's not in a good place. Um, can they disembark into the sea? Yes, they can. Okay, right, let's bring the chariot back over here and maybe they could join in some of the fighting. Uh, yeah, we did sort of offend off some barbarians over there, which was quite good. Let's sort this out, actually, because, uh, yeah, we've got ourselves an archer unit. I'm not quite sure why we have an archer unit, 
Was it because we finished doing a researchy thing? I don't know. Maybe it was because we finished that uh, that bit of research. Does that give you an archer, possibly? It might give you a free archer. Oh, yeah, it does. Okay, right, that's quite good. All uh, right, back over here, then. Uh, what do we go for for the Age of Bronze research? I think we research officials, because that means we can generate an envoy, or an envoy, never quite sure how you say that, and then we can send them off to go and chat to some of the little kind of independent city-states around us and maybe get them turned into our vassals to provide a little bit of money and culture and science and everything else. That could be quite handy. So yes, please. Can we please look into unlocking the secrets of officials? Thank you very much. Oh, hang on a minute. Bristol. I'm so sorry, Bristol. I completely forgot about you. Hello, Bristol. Can we please integrate you? Because that would be amazing. So uh, yes, we will integrate Bristol. There we go. They become a proper city with, you know, proper kind of screen that we can click on. We can tell the people where to go and work and we can tell them what to build and all that kind of stuff. Um, I think right now, get a dolman put together. Because, again, that can increase the amount of sort of uh, expansion that's going on. And, yeah, if we're already pretty good at expanding into the sea, that's just going to make that even better, which is going to be wonderful. Um, in here, could we now unlock a few more of these things? I mean, plus three sight range and plus one production from a dock. That might be quite good. That's 30 of our points there. So get that. And then we've got a load of points down here. So we could get a dock for Bristol. We could just put that just there that'll do so that can now help bristol build things a bit quicker because it provides production um and then thinking about it over here uh northampton ah here we go so hang on the needs over here for bristol are adequate but not brilliant why is it only on 100 percent food rather than 200 percent when they've got this yeah they've got this tuna thing here to work on um why are they not doing that or is that not, is that sending it back to, maybe that's sending that to Northampton or something. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, stop doing that for now. Don't do that. And then do that again. No, I don't know why that's only on 100%. Bristol's going to grow in 15 turns. Bristol, what's going on with you? What is the issue there? They're working the dock and not the water. Why are they not working the tile where the great big tuna is? which can give them much in the way of food for a good long time. Um, yeah, tuna with fish. Oh, hang on a minute, with fishing boats. Okay, move. Oh, we can't move that little thing out the way. Hang on, we'll end our turn and we'll sort that out. Bristol, we are here to help you. It's all fine. Uh, we can bring our chariot in. That's very good. There's our lovely chariot that can just park up in front there. Um, and we have been training up the city guard because the city guard are a particular unit type that can help sort of uh, deal with unrest. They suppress it quite well. And you want to make sure you get on that quite early. So you guys head over there to Bristol and just make sure that nobody in Bristol gets all kind of angry or whatever. Um, right, you move to... Oh, no, hang on, still got the next turn, have we? Oh, who are you? Oh, Scout. Okay, yeah, bring the Scout back over here. I thought we'd moved you already. Uh, and then we have this boat down here that's just going on a lovely little boating holiday round here. We do have another culture power to use. Uh, we could raise an army. That's just a fairly basic army. So I don't know if we want to do that. We could do a bit of a Eureka thing and give us 10 knowledge. So we get this research done and then we'd have a good chunk of the next bit of research done as well. I think that's how that works. Um, I don't think we can create another town. I don't think local reforms are going to help. And we haven't got any outposts to absorb. That's a completely different sort of a thing. So I think maybe for now, let's do a Eureka. That'll help us complete our current research, which is good. Right. There's the um, there's the envoy that's appeared. Um, I mean, yeah, let's go. Oh, I mean, which one do we chat to? We could chat to Kazan down there. Malmo, I, I don't think. I'm just thinking Japan are down here. Japan might see Kazan down there as nearby to them and they might try and get them as their vassal. So I think maybe we get Kazan as our vassal first and then later on we just talk to Malmo because Malmo right next to us. They're kind of hemmed into the corner there. So I think we go down here to Kazan. Um, however, who can go with our person because they're not going to go on their own because that would be silly. Chariot, you go with the envoy and make sure they don't get killed to death. Um, and Northampton, what shall we do with you now? Because you've finished building the city guard. There are many options. 
many, many options. I think a work camp would help quite a bit. Two production, so anything else we do actually build is going to be built a bit quicker. One engineering XP, that's a whole new engineering XP type that we get to spend stuff on. Uh, yeah, that'll appear over here. So we'll have government, exploration, warfare, there's engineering, there's arts, there's various other things as well. And now we get to pick our technology. Officials is done. Let's move toward the Age of Iron. We're not going to be first there. We're not going to be first there. We have got a little bit of a heads up into it, I think, from the Eureka thing we just did. But yeah, the Age of Iron, Greece are 82.3% of the way through. I get the feeling that Greece might be some sort of mega superpower in this game. And when we meet them, they might possibly be a little bit scary. Oh, we've met Brazil, apparently, have we? Whereabouts are you, Brazil? Are you around here somewhere? Where's Brazil? I'm not entirely sure. They must have come across them somewhere. I'm, I don't know. I don't know. Brazil are around somewhere, everybody. Hi, Brazil. Oh, and I think maybe Greece have moved into a new age. Here we go. Yep, it was Greece. Just showing off now, Greece. The Age of Iron. So we dodged the Age of Blood. That didn't happen. And uh, yeah, the Age of Heroes didn't happen either, which is a bit of a shame because it would be fun to look at some of the more sort of out there ages rather than going through the regular ones. But there we go. So the Age of Iron it is. Mine improvements cost 20% less. The growth rate of the population increases by 12.5%. And we get new governments. Okay, right. But we don't get some things like that because we're not in the Age of Iron just yet. We're five turns away. Okay, the Envoy and the Chariot are now down here at Kazan without any issues. That's very good. And I think if we press that there, that tells our Envoy to vassalize Kazan. It will bring them under the control of our nation, turning it into a vassalized territory. And they'll just give us a little bit of stuff each turn. They just you know, pay tribute to us. They give us some science and some money and some culture and all that kind of stuff. So I think let's do that to Kazan right now. Boop. And there we go. Kazan is now one of our vassals. Hello, Kazan. How are you? You've got grapes over there, which is interesting. Um, so yeah, we can't do much with them. We can't do much with them right now, I don't think. I think in the long run, they, they'll sort of, you know, we can possibly turn them into one of our cities that we can control if we want to. But yeah, over time, they will start generating quite good amounts of stuff. So I think for the minute, we will leave them like that. We'll leave them like that for now. Um, and we'll just bring the chariot back up that way. That's very good. There are some bar bars down there. Might want to keep an eye on those, causing some problems. Uh, we'll start moving our boat around. Oh, crikey. Okay. We've come to a bit of a dead end because we can't get around there. Our boats can't go into the deep water. And Japan has got a city right there, which is a bit of a nuisance, if we're being honest. Uh, we'll move you back over there. You can sort of hold fire over there. Um, and I think what we'll do is to wrap things up for now, because I think we do need to kind of finish things up. Um, we will build ourselves another farm over here because we have got a great big pile of improvement points and we're not using them. So let's get a little farm over there. So Northampton's food supplies are now looking good. However, you will notice that we do have a bit of a sort of a, a warning thing over here saying that Northampton now doesn't have enough housing. Because Northampton is a bit bigger, it's got a brand new need. So food is okay. We've ticked off the food need. Now they have a housing need. So people don't really want to just live in the city anymore. They want to go and live in the suburbs. And there is a thing for that. We can put down a little tiny kind of dwelling thing for 10 of our points. Um, we'll put it on that kind of scrubland there. We drop that there, that provides some additional housing, and now housing is on 200%. Northampton's needs are being met to 200%, which is brilliant. And then finally over here, could we get some fishing boats in for Bristol, put them onto that tuna, and then they can make use of the tuna. There you go, from 100% to 175% of their needs being sorted out just by getting some tuna which is brilliant. Okay, yep, happy with that. That's looking pretty good. So, oh, hang on a minute. We've got stuff over here that we could do with our tribal government. Do we want to spend 14 of our 15 government points on getting community projects, which gives us another improvement point per turn? Yes, we do. Absolutely. And we just did. Uh, we could spawn a warband if we wanted to, or we could get a scout or another utility ship. Uh, I mean, maybe... Could we get a utility ship over here somewhere? That might be quite handy. Uh, let's spawn one over here, maybe. Um, 
It doesn't mean... Oh, no, it's got to be at the dock. Okay, yeah, so pop one in over there. Can you just kind of go over here and do anything? Oh, no, you go there, look. I don't know why I sent you that way. You go back that way and grab that tuna from there. Okay, so, yeah, the utility ships are kind of like replacements for the fishing boats. That's a more permanent thing that we got from our improvement points. The utility ships are just little boats that can also grab stuff out the sea. Okay, wonderful. And with that done... We will wrap things up for now. So we got through to the third age of the game, I believe. Well, we're not quite there yet, actually. But you know what? Let's get through to the third age, and then we'll wrap things up. Hang on a minute. Let's just you know, move time on a little bit. There we go. We're now in the age of iron. Wonderful. So we're now in the third age of the game. Let us enter that age. Oh, Japan are getting a little bit grumpy with us. We grow weary of your presence. Maybe it's because we've been sailing around near their coast. And they've got a little bit grumpy with us. We've got a little bit too close. But okay, don't you worry, Japan. We're heading back over here now. We're moving away from you. We will leave you alone. And I think, yeah, with that done, we'll finish things up for now. We'll come back next time, I think. Oh, hang on a minute. We need some more housing. Oh, did the bar... Oh, there were some barbarians. Okay, hang on. Repair that. Okay, there we go. Everything is fine in Northampton again. Yay, Northampton looks good. Um, so yeah, we'll come back again next time. And we'll just see how we get on. Because I do really quite like this. I like this. As we said at the start... It's, if you squint a bit, it looks a bit like Civ. You've got a hex map and cities and roads and things all over it and resources. But it's a little bit different because the way it works is all this kind of stuff over here. You've kind of got points to invest in things. And it's not just a case of your cities generating everything. You can summon up units via using your points over here, which makes it really interesting. And a little bit unlike Civ, you don't have a kind of a default civilization to begin with. When you play Civ, if you pick, say, I don't know, if you pick to play as Japan, then Japan have a certain set of sort of skills they can do before, you know, before you've even started. They're good at, you know, A, B and C and they get a special unit of this. Whereas this game, you kind of build your nation as you go along. You pick things, you pick how you want to go, you pick your kind of um, your national spirit and you pick your governments and things like that. You pick where you want to research and different ages and things. So, you know, it is a little bit sort of a little bit more personalized a bit more sort of tailored to building your own nation rather than just picking one that's already been done for you and then making the use of those bonuses which i do quite like so yes we are going to come back to this and just see how we get on we'll just kind of plod on a bit i mean we might do really well it might be amazing we might get horribly murdered by some people that come along i mean greece probably a little bit scared of greece right now but we will see how we get on but uh yeah we'll try and maybe settle another place up here possibly because there is some good stuff up here, look. We've got some marble up there and rice and cotton's really good. Uh, and then over here, I notice that we do have some coal. I don't know if we can use coal too much right now, but that's going to be very, very handy later on. We'll try and bring Malmo on board, maybe get them as one of our vassals as well. So there is plenty to do. There is a lot to do. So yeah, we'll finish up for now, come back next time and see how we get on in the grand tale of Cabordia. Hopefully you have enjoyed this. I hope you have, because it's been a lot of fun playing. It's really good. So hopefully you've enjoyed watching. If you have, please do leave a like. That would be most marvellous indeed. And also, if you're not already, then please do subscribe to keep up to date with how we get on here next time out in millennia. But for now, now, thank you very much for joining me in the Geek Cupboard, and I'll see you next time. The City of Cupboard, it can be full of geeks, very loyal geeks to me. It's this sort of stripy hill. That's interesting. Oh, stripy mountain. Sorry, I, I downgraded you to a hill. Just really irritate the Norwegians. Everyone had gold. People were lying on beds of gold. They were eating gold. They were trying to wash their hair with gold. There was gold literally everywhere in our empire.